Ghosts are alive with the sound of retro. retro. Yep, on the retro show today. Old news. Made the first call 50 years ago. Retro memes. Here are a few popular halal restaurants. <laughs> Fun boxings. That. Your homebrew projects. Yes, it's playing Doom. That slot's in there. And your nostalgic photos. Welcome, Welcome to the Retro Show. Yes, welcome to episode 25, yes, we're still alive, of The Retro, Retro Show. Shows. And that was Basil the dog, sent in by his owner, Morgan Hetherington. And Basil is a big fan of the show, as you can see. I can see that. He told us every time the, the show comes on, Basil runs up to the screen and barks. And he, he does say, Basil just loves The Retro Show, but his enthusiasm can get in the way of my enjoyment. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Should we do a Faulty Towers style uh, shout out to Basil? Basil! You don't put That's Basil in get. the ratatouille. I mean, Basil, my little ratatouille. The chef calls the ratatouille Basil because he puts quite a lot of Basil in it. <laughs> you put Basil in the ratatouille? Yes! Ah! No! Good girl, there's some ratatouille for you. And some, do you want to give him some ratatouille? Sure, do. Some ratatouille for him. And as for you, you don't get ratatouille. You get a- episode 52-y, <laughs> still the way around, 25-y. <laughs> Welcome to the show. And we're going to get started with... Old news. Ah, that's old news. <laughs> and first up, a little bit of sad news. So unfortunately, Gordon Moore, who's the co-founder of Intel, passed away recently. And he predicted Moore's Law, which was the rule that technology basically doubles year upon year, so the speed of processors would get twice as fast every year. Um, And until very recently, that was proven to be the case for decades. Moore's legacy extends beyond the technology, as he and his wife's charity efforts focused on environmental causes. Intel paid tribute to its visionary co-founder in a tweet, and the world mourns the loss of a true pioneer. So rest in peace, Gordon Moore, and thank you for your contribution to probably touched upon all of our lives in in many ways. I feel like half of the things in this room would not be possible if it wasn't for him. Yeah. Anyway, let's try and uh, get a bit more upbeat, shall we? Because the Super Mario Brothers movie obviously has been out for about a month now, and has been breaking box office, box orifice records. Left, right, and center. And from behind, apparently. Um, <laughs> wahoo! Can you do the voice? Depends on who. Do the wahoo. Wahoo! <laughs> um, but you may not know, there's a Tetris movie as well, which is now out streaming on Apple TV+. Plus. I believe it's rated R. Probably some swearing in there. At but least. What else could there be? Well, isn't it about... Some like hot block action. No, it's about like communist Russia. Ah. And lots of violence. Well, that's just history. But yes, um, no, you're probably right. But this tells the story, it, yes, how the game was acquired, I think, from Russia. Uh, and it's um, tr- based on the true story. Starring... Taron. I always call, want to call him Egon Taronston, but it's Taron Egginston. Yeah. Egginston, Egg- something like that. Anyway, catch that on Apple TV+. Plus. Retro Atari game found after being lost for 40 years. Sonar is described as a toy version of Battleship. So yeah, this is Sonar for the Atari 2600, which never passed the development stage and was never released. Its creator, Brad Stewart, thought it had been lost, but 40 years later, it was found in the collection of Jim Snyder, who worked at Atari in the 1980s. The game is described as a toy version of Battleship by Stewart. Then it's a race to find them and destroy them. That's some cool shit. Dying? This isn't R-rated. I said shit. Ah, sorry. Next up, Zap64, the world's greatest Commodore 64 magazine, has a new editor, me! <laughs> yep, issue 13 just came out, and it's a childhood dream come true for me. Just incredible. Uh, I've made it my mission with this issue, mish, mish you, <laughs> to inject more of that 1980s Newsfield magazine fun into the mag, including more Rockford and more brand new game reviews. We actually have a backlog now, which is incredible. And it's something you told us you wanted anyway. But if you're not a Commodorian, Commodorian, 
check out Sister Mag's Zap Amiga, Amtix for Amstrad, or our old rival Crash for Spectrum Computing, though of course it's still nowhere near as good as Zap64. Gotta keep that friendly rivalry going, eh? Check out the links in the description if you want to look at any of those mags and feel like it's 1985 again. Next up... Mobile phone inventor made the first call 50 years ago. Yep, back on 3rd of April 1973 when I was four, three months old. <laughs> three months old. Marty Cooper stood on a corner of 6th Avenue in New York and took a phone book from his pocket. Now, it looked like a phone book, but it was this thing that he's holding here. It's a little younger than you, isn't it? I thought you were going to say it's a little smaller than me. <laughs> even, it's got even smaller. Well, you might have been about the same size. I thought you were going to say about the same age. He does look like a newborn. I mean, the phone. I didn't have a beard when I was four months. <laughs> well, they call them brick phones for a reason. Yeah. And finally, for old news. Now, we never really like to talk about uh, asking for your support. But something interesting happened recently. Um, some of you will know YouTube hikes the price for YouTube Premium as seen here on the right, by about $5 a month. And for the first time ever, we actually saw our subscriber numbers drop. Now they've been growing organically for the five years we've been doing this. But literally the day that hit everyone's credit card bill, um, yeah, numbers actually went in reverse for a few days and now it's just kind of flatlined. Now it's not gonna cause us a huge problem, but uh, we do also have to pay the bills and, and making this show isn't quite as simple as we may make it seem. Um, so for one of those rare occasions we're asking for your support, you can click on the thanks button down there. It's below me, you can see it. Uh, you can click on this dog, that won't do anything. Um, also, you can click to join our YouTube channel memberships. Or the best way to support us is actually on our Patreon. Yeah, and Patreon is actually where we're most actively involved and uh, often posting polls and behind the scenes stuff. I recently posted a huge half hour update on nine upcoming projects in Perifrastic, which is my uh, behind the scenes vlog. Um, yeah, we do polls and pictures and uh, Patreon lens updates a bit like kind of Instagram stories. Just Lots of to... behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, we just posted one actually of, of us swimming with the dogs um, and Junie Fractic looking a bit like a Velociraptor, the way that she stands in the pool. Anyway, thank you for your support. <laughs> to the uh, praying emoji with holding the script. Um, but yeah, it really does help us keep going. But anyway, that is it for old news. We that start. was old news. It was old news. And uh, that means it is time for... Can I see what you mean? We'll see what she means. And first up, open the pod bay doors, please, help. Searching for cod recipes online. Pod. Open the pod bay doors, please. Sorry, I can't find anyone named Rod K. More in your contacts. What's the problem? Problem Child is a 1990 comedy movie <laughs> starring Michael Oliver. Movie, no. What are you talking about, huh? Playing Talking Heads on Spotify. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. Here are a few popular halal restaurants. <laughs> Big Al's Pizzeria, Fatima's Halal Meat Market and Grill, Cedar's Halal Meat Market and Grill, and Old Wanai Where the hell did you get that idea, Hal? Searching for flights to Idaho. I do have you anymore. Open the doors. Playing the doors on Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. The Halal 9000 there. Thank you, Big Fat Yummy. And next up, the Doom music. This is played on the OP1 synthesizer. So that's chicken. That was fun. Yeah, Lonely Bunker strikes again there. Was that a chicken? It, w it was for a split second. Yeah, yeah. chicken lips. Uh, Doom edition. Does it run Doom? Apparently it does. When you find the Chinese bootleg subtitle version of episode three and realize it's an untapped meme gold mine. Management trainee Skywalker, they outnumber us greatly. Please submit and share action plan. <laughs> action plan initiates. It's hard to do in a lightsaber, the sound effect Is voice. It... <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard a lightsaber talk. Oh, they talk. 
Oh, yeah. You just have to use the four. Speaking of which, this is literally how I used to scroll through pictures before Instagram. Chick, chick. Do you ever have a Viewmaster? My friend Danny did. I don't know if I actually had one, but I remember we always lost the, um, the film reels, the discs, yeah. And it was, of course, 3D, which even Instagram still doesn't have. So we were ahead of the times in the late 70s, early 80s. Next up. Did you know Samuel L. Jackson makes an appearance in Greece? Does he look like a bitch? you'd like that we have to bleep you now we have to bleep both of us r2c4 can you bleep everyone please in that thanks next this is cool wow does he make it oh <laughs> no no he does not make it in honor of the mario super mario brothers movie there wow wow <laughs> she likes that Wow. Okay, last up. Bills are alive with the sound of music. <laughs> with songs they have sung for a thousand years. Who said they don't like AI? The hills fill my heart with the sound of music. She can feel my pain. Like that was quite sweet. My heart wants to sing every song. It here. Oh, the mountains look like. Mountains look like what? I guess we'll never know. Um, finally, <laughs> uh, one of the viewers of this channel, Tomas Polgart, saw this. Nagy Balas. Do you know who that looks like? Looks like you. It does, doesn't it? But his name is Nagy Balas. Apparently, he's famous because he's starring in Mamma Mia. Apparently, I have a look like. Uh, you do? In another land. Meiji Balazars. Fair. You said this is in Brazil? Did I? Did you? No. Never mentioned Brazil at all. Oh. <laughs> we will put where this is just down here. So now you know. And with all that said, it is time for... Do you want to do a little bit of... Fun boxing? Yeah. <laughs> And first up, a word from Harley Fractic, with a classic Harley Fractic clip. Remember this one? Okay, Bunny, I see you three. I raise you one. One pretzel. You're bluffing. I got what you got. I've got PCB Ways. They have PCBs starting at just $5. It's okay, Bunny, if you want some tea, that will come down. Light him up, kid. Light him up, kid. So thank you so much uh, to The Game Closet for loaning out Harley Frantic. I've got PCB Way. She's got a full hand there. Thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring this episode and this segment, which means it is time for, to get on and crack on with the fun boxings. So let's get rid of the TV. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> it's exploded and been replaced with these two boxes. I suppose we should unbox them in that I case. Guess. Would you like to do the first honours? Oh, start my watch. Look at it. Hello, Perry Fractic and Lady Fractic. Love your show. And I've been watching your channel for years. Back in the day, I played my C64 and later Mika 600. But to be honest, I always thought Ooh. my brother's NES game controllers were much better than my, probably too, cheapish joysticks. Many years later, I achieved the best of two worlds and I made this PCB that would fit in an NES controller and allow me to use it on a C64 and Amiga. Awesome. That's very cool. I whole kit. I open source the PCB as the NES 6. It's the whole kit. Kit and Caboodle? Yes, no, Kit and DeLorean. So that anyone can send it off to PCB Way and make their own game controller. But I also sell kits and finished controllers through my website. Who sells kits? AutumnHippo.com. Oh. AutumnHippo.com? AutumnHippo.com. If you're in America, you have to go to FullHippo.com. Thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, that's really cool. So I can plug that straight in a bit back to, next to the Commodore 64, didn't I?
which means we can move on to number two of two. We actually each have a cutty thing because so often we don't. Only took us five years to get it right. <laughs> That's our break up. So I actually ordered this. I saw this on the interwebs and placed an order on eBay. And it is, I'm really excited to see this actually. So I used to have a miniature version of one of these. Sorry, let me rephrase that. This is a miniature version of what I used to own. Look at that. So it's the GBP Great Valley Products hard disk that would plug into the side of the Amiga 500. So I had one of these. I had the A530 Turbo, but it's just a different label. And um, yeah, the hard disk and accelerated board were in here. Okay, that's where I stored all my files, which I more recently copied onto the A1200 Maxi USB drive on my childhood files. And it just so happens oh. I have here <laughs> the A500 Mini. And that is exactly how my setup used to look. So I think it's already, I ordered the one that already has the USB or the SD card in that. So that's inside, which means as soon as I boot this up, it's going to be showing the full partition there to put all your games on. That's amazing. So I can actually plug this straight into the 800 Maxi. That's sitting right here. Can you tell me what this is? And this, this is a little, another fun thing that he makes. I will put all the links in the description as always. Because this doesn't have a real floppy drive. Mm -hmm. Oh, it just sits there. You can, you can buy different ones with different games or make them just to look like the real deal. That's very cute. Because I, I saw it and I was like, I don't... Half a disc? Well, so there's nothing you know that's shaped like that. So that makes a lot more sense. It does. Thank you so much for sending that after I paid you for it. <laughs> and that means that is it for fun boxing. Don't try and hit me. Uh, next up... Let's take a look at your home brews. Mm. And first up on home brews, and he said home news. Uh, it's one of those days. Uh, as you all know, you can play Doom on almost anything. Uh, we even saw the Doom theme tune played on an OP1 just now. Here is LGR playing Doom on a Texas Instruments. TI-83 Plus. Oh my God. Uh, here it is played on a chocolate bar. Pretty normal, normal stuff that you see every day, really. Uh, even on a John Deere tractor. <laughs> I think Jeremy Clarkson would like that, wouldn't he? But doesn't he have a, is it a Ferrari? He has a, a Lambo. The Lambo tractor, tractor, yes. And what is this? Oh, that's Doom played with inside, within Doom. This is actually the game Doom. That's funny. Yeah, one of the walls playing it there. We've seen everything, but actually, have you seen Doom played on, what is this? Is it gonna be one of the little Lego screens? Yeah, so this is a Lego battery with terminals. This has got an OLED yes. monochrome screen in there. Yes, it's playing Doom from a Pico. You know the Pico? Yes. But look, he's put accelerometers inside. Oh, it's super fast. Oh, he so can tilt it. <gasps> that's it. And he's As shooting with the button. So those are capacitive uh, touch responsive buttons and you tilt the steer. That's incredible. Like, as we had said earlier that the Moore's Law. Moore's Law, yeah. That Things are getting twice as small, twice as fast, oh twice as doomy. That'd be cool if you could use the John Deere tractor like that and as you steer you. <laughs> I mean. What would fire be there? Horn. <laughs> I, I just hope you have a very large field. Yes. Speaking of fields, Aussie, Aussie oh fractic. Gosh. That is pure manure. You're a good girl. Though. You didn't do it. Well, we're not sure, but yeah. Anyway, very cool. Um, that's from YouTuber James Brown. I feel good. Um, you'd mentioned we made the Obi Wan Kenobi joke. Um, I saw a post that said that. Ewan McGregor's brother is in, I think he's in the Royal Air Force or in the Royal Navy, and his call sign is OB2. <laughs> yeah, true story. They look almost identical. They do. So. Yeah. yeah. When he's retiring from the military, he should be his double. Yeah. Might pay more. Very cool. Uh, and then finally, for homebrews, viewer Polly Matt has done this. 
so otherwise known as HRush, and he's done what he calls a Zen build of the floppy EMU Plus Ooh. Apple Disk 2. Now we've got an Apple IIe over there with two Disk 2 drives. You repaired one of them, actually. I did. I did, not you. Look what he's making here. Look at the tiny little heat gun. <laughs> So this is the a genuine front plate from a disc two, and here he's using Shaper 3D to design a little insert. You're going to see where this goes in a minute. Got to sand it, of course. If you're going to paint it, yeah. Yeah, beautiful work. Wow. That slots in there. Stop it. He uses the floppy emu uh, open source um, floppy drive emulator for Apple computers. I said drive, <laughs> and her head went. Yeah, we have a floppy email on the Macintosh there. We do. But look at that. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. Now, if I didn't have two working disc <laughs> twos, thanks to you, I that is so tempting to make that and just load up hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of games in there. So really great work, Polymat. Thanks for viewing our channel. Thanks for sending in cool stuff. Um, that's some really great work. Which means it is a fitting end for home news, not news, brews. Home brews. I'm going to get a bruise in a minute. Finally, would you like a nice, delicious, tasty bowl of nostalgia flakes? Mmm. Well, yes, it is time for nostalgia flakes. Do you remember what's up first? No. Yes? Why don't you tell me? <laughs> How about we take a visit to... The gallery! See, all I had to say was two. Twenty twenty-four. That's next year. <laughs> He's from the future. What do you recognize that what that game was? Uh I don't think so. <laughs> Everything's twenty twenty-four this year, apparently this month. Uh, an Amiga 500 here. Very. I had that disc drive still. I still have one. 2024. Just kidding. I love. This is like the quintessential nostalgia flake photo here. I love the wallpaper. Look um, at the pants. Look at the cute old guys playing the game on the Atari or whatever it was. I can't help but look at all the textiles, the wood paneling. Look at the tweed like chair. I you meant styles of tech. <laughs> textiles. Tech now look at those glasses. <laughs> cool. Was that John Cusack there? I don't know. Mother and son. 2024. Preparing for battle in 2024. Oh, because they're playing uh, like a battleship game. Yeah, she did not look happy. Most posing. Well, she can't look. Oh, I see. See, that doesn't even look that long ago. That could have been 2024 as well. I mean, in certain schools, yeah. Ah, a very futuristic visit to the gallery. The gallery. Uh, I'll have to have a word with my co-producer. <laughs> it's obviously been stepping in and out of the TARDIS too often and created that next year. <laughs> we'll show this again next year. Uh, but we do have to round up the show with this. In a world, world of fun and fantasy and ever-changing volumes and computer terminology, <laughs> Commodore is news. Oh, there is it. Guess the Commodore is keeping up with you. Are you keeping up? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Are you keeping up? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. World of high technology, technology. You change Never exchanging keys <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> full of make-believe And changing attitudes I'm sure we're skipping beats Are you keeping up with the, the Commodore? Because the, the Commodore is keeping, keeping up with you Are you keeping up with the Commodore? I've found, found the correct, correct key. key I think I was in it and then we weren't Somehow oh. Magical And finally yeah, I'm playing Super Mario yes. World, and I can't find the second exit in the cheese bridge. Okay, what you're gonna need to do on that is... So this is Nintendo's play, genuine uh, support hotline. And start flying to the right. right. Okay, just right. before you come to the goal, yeah. 
What you need to do is dive and go underneath that goal, and you'll hit another goal. Ah, I knew I was going to Great, thanks. Hey, you bet. Thanks for calling. The dream job. Imagine knowing the game inside out, and you're just like, yeah, all you got to do is fly up and then fly down instead of flying straight and then just flying left, whatever he was doing. I mean, having the, like the game guide plus also you know that that's been asked a hundred times and you're like yeah yeah i got you buddy hey you bet it's kind of what i used to do for blue ribbon soundworks when i was their uk tech support line for the amiga are you sure it's on is it plugged in which one's the left mouse button the one that's not on the right but which one's the left mouse the button on the left mouse or the right mouse the things i had to deal with but anyway from Thank you for calling. (laughs) Thank you for watching. That is it for the Retro Show this month. We'll be back in 2025. (laughs) We'll be back next month with another edition of the show. Until then. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and support below and cheerio. Cheerio.